Hello everybody, welcome back. So this week's video we're going to be making a peening anvil for sharpening scythes. So we're going to be making it out of 20mm square bar. We're marking it off 2.5 inches from the end and this will be upset to being an inch long, followed by a 6 inch section in the middle which will be the main mast of the anvil, and a half inch section towards the end which will be a punched hole, followed by an inch and a half section which will be drawn to a three inch taper. So using a small square I will make sure that the measurements stretch all the way around the square bar and I will set a dot on the line. And we will take the first heat. So like I mentioned a second ago, we're going to start by upsetting the end of this bar. So again, like I said, it is currently two and a half inches from the center dot and we are going to upset it to being an inch long. I'm quenching it off below the center dot and that'll just save distortion. Any distortion you do get, you'll have to straighten out as you go along and dress the shape of the upset as well because you want it to be even on all four faces and continue until it is an inch long. So you can see this is nice and chunky now. So at this stage I will give it a big old scrub with the wire brush and I will start flattening flattening down two of the faces and we want it to be 20mm thick like the parent bar. So any excess thickness will be transformed into extra width. So with the primary upsetting done I will then forge a very shallow taper onto the end of it and I'll make sure that that outer face stays flat and straight and the point of the taper ended up being about half inch. So I will now take an old piece of file and this will be the hard face of the peening anvil. So I'll mark this up using the blank that I've just upset. And I'll do the first cut and then I'll grind off one of the faces. And the face that I'm grinding off will be the actual working face of the anvil. I'm leaving the teeth on the underside because I'm actually going to use them to fix the hard face to the blank. And to do this I will select a few of the outer teeth and I'll just go in with a chisel and open them up a bit so that I have some nice sharp spikes sticking up that the blank can be hammered onto. So I will heat up the blank to a nice yellow heat and I'll just stick some flux on there so that there is some flux between the two mating surfaces. I've done the same on the hard face as well and a couple of hammer blows and that will stick. Now if you're not very confident with this working feel free to tack it That'll work as well. So we'll take a welding heat and I will heat it up leaving the hard face uncovered and when it gets close I will just flux it up. The reason I'm leaving the face uncovered is to save it overheating and the first heat won't be properly at a welding heat but I just want to tack that face onto there then the second heat I will start properly welding. So and you can see I've turned it face up and that'll just allow me to make sure that I am welding along the entire surface of the hard face. I'll take a third and fourth heat just to blend in the edges. Obviously I'm putting more flux on with every new heat that I'm taking. Um, I don't use flux normally for mild steel and wrought iron. Because I'm dealing with higher carbon steel I am using flux and that'll limit the risk of it burning. So after welding give it a good scrub 
get rid of all that excess flux that might still be on there and start cleaning it up give it a bit of a straighten and take out any hammer marks from the side of the face and here we go all welded up and as you can see this is one of my better welds there's no evidence whatsoever of it being there which is the kind of weld I like so at that stage I'm going to take the working face and I'm just going to chamfer the edges a little the straight corners and that will allow me to go on to the bottom swage and just round that face uh, because for the peening action you want a nice rounded face that you can lead the edge of the scythe onto in order to sharpen it so I will then turn the piece of work around and six inches down at the half inch mark I will slot punch it now you could also slit this if you wanted to I decided to slot punch it, it would save me a bit of time really depends on the effect that you want to get so punching from one side, turn it over, punching from the other side spit out that slug quench off your punch obviously because that will start overheating and I'll then take my slitting bolster and I will just bang a drift down that slot punch just to get it close to its final dimension now you can see I've got a bit of a dip from where I first started punching in uh, we'll sort that out in a minute uh, before we sort that out though I'm going to draw out this taper on the inch and a half mark so that section we marked up at an inch and a half from the bottom of the bar we're going to draw out to three inches in length so start off with your cross beam then move on to the flat face of your hammer clean it up. So I do kind of wish I'd maybe given myself two inches rather than an inch and a half and I could have had a taper of the same length, three inches but slightly thicker. So with that taper drawn out I'm then going to bang the drift back in there and using the cross pin I'm going to spread those cheeks out so that I end up with a 20mm wide square bar again. So, with the body of the anvil nearly made, I'm going to chamfer the edges between the punched hole and the head of the anvil. I just think that looks a lot smarter, it's a bit more decorative. It'll make it look a bit less like a square bar with a head and a hole punched in it. Start that off with quite broad heavy blows just to set the line. And then at a dull red heat I'll go in and clean that up, get rid of the hammer marks and planish it a bit. Then I'll pop over to the flat face of the anvil and just dress those lines, straighten everything up, flatten everything out, planish it a little bit as well. So, and using the flat face of the anvil and the flat face of my hammer, I'll just stick a chamfer on that taper as well, just to dress it up, make it look smarter, straighten everything out. And here is the finished body of the anvil. Well, sort of finished. Got a bit of a way to go yet, but... So if you're wondering why I put that slotted hole in there, uh, I'm going to stick some scrolls in it. And the scrolls will stop the anvil from sinking into the stump as you're peening your scythe. Now, I could forge out some round bar to produce some 3 mil thick flat bar, uh, but I have some 3 mil thick sheet, so I'm going to use that. I'm cutting two strips, 6 inches long by 15 millimeters wide, uh, and I've still got a double line on the second strip because I need to compensate for the thickness of the grinding disc, cutting disc. Right, cut that out, dress the edges on the linisher so you don't cut yourself and I will stick a taper on each end of each bar so with that done I will insert them into the body of the anvil and head over to the vise 
I will use a chisel to start spreading them. I'll just hold them into position a bit. Uh, it's a bit trickier to do the other side. Not chiseling the same. I'm lucky enough to have a narrow jaw device. I'll just head over to the anvil and just emphasize that bend. That'll hold these strips in place whilst I scroll them over. So scrolling these is a little bit tricky. I used a combination of hammer and anvil and pliers and tongs. And I'm not getting a Fibonacci style scroll. I am literally coiling them up into circles uh, so that they lock together and basically provide a platform to stop the anvil sinking further into the stump as you are peening your scythe. And that puff of smoke was me burning myself on hot metal, in case you're wondering. After blacksmithing for 10 years, you don't really feel it anymore. And tweak those in with a hammer. So I'll also use a square on the face of the anvil in conjunction with the hardy hole uh, just to ensure that it's going to sit upright and square from the block. And that is the forge work completed. So at this stage I will stick my maker's mark on it because I'm quite proud of how this has turned out. And I will head over to the vise and I will clean up that face. Now, because I'm doing some filing I will chalk up the file and that will lubricate it and stop it from loading up with iron filings. And Using a swinging motion, I will clean up that curve on the peen. So you don't want to file down too much because uh, the face of the anvil is maybe four or five mil thick. So only clean it up, don't try to do any shaping, that's why we swaged it. And at this stage I will normalise it three times, just to make sure that, that weld doesn't crack when I quench it. So normalise, hold it at critical temperature for 20 minutes, and put it to one side to cool down on its own. I repeated this three times before taking a further heat at critical temperature, holding it for 20 minutes, and quenching in water. As you can see it slowed down, it cooled down a little slower than I would have liked, it still hardened it but next time I do one of these I'll probably use brine to accelerate that cooling. And testing it with the file, it is hard, not as hard as I'd have liked, but I'm going to go for it anyway, because I didn't have time to reharden it. Uh, so I will just take a stone and clean up that face to make it nice and shiny. That will allow me to see the temper colours, because I'm going to use my gas forge to bring it up to a purple temper. Uh, I could probably have gotten away with a straw coloured temper but I went for purple because it is going to be a struck surface. Uh, once it reaches purple quench it off, clean it up again, repeat three times just to be sure. And then it's over to the vise and the wire brush to clean it up. And here it is, the peening anvil complete. So I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. Uh, might have dressed those curved radiuses a bit more. Not overly pleased with the scrolls, but they'll do the job. So, there we go. Now, if you're wondering why I made this thing, guess what I'm going to make next week. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, please like or comment on the video. If you enjoy these videos, please consider donating on Patreon. Every penny goes towards making these videos. Uh, here's my current list of Patreon donors. Thanks a lot, guys. You're all wonderful. And I will see you all next week. Bye.